Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Second part to this video on March 2018 for wiring up this trailer and it is for a uh, water pump. I'm gonna let the gentleman here explain all that. Real quick, I just wanted to show you though, I backfed this by, like I already showed you on the first part of the video, how I wired this. I just ran a cord right here that's run, you know, it's like a 14 gauge cord. Came into here and then once I turned on my breaker, it actually backfed AB all the way down. Um, is it the best way to do it? No, but I don't have a generator here tonight So I just ran it with an extension cord Made sure the other end that we already showed you was capped so we don't short it on the other side coming back this way and trip the breaker in there Anyways, um, yeah, so this is right here GFCI. So if I trip this It'll actually kill my sensor. These sensors have a photo wife uh, for uh, Sunlight versus nighttime and I did have to adjust that to get them to kick on and then sensitivity, I did uh, I did a like really high because of walking in the other side of the door. And time, I came down real low because I want it to stay on as long as it can. Um, anyways, I want to sh uh, show you here, Gerald. Uh, he'll explain a little bit more about this awesome pump here that they've got and what they're doing with it. So I'm Gerald Munez. I'm with Pump Masters. We're a water transfer company located in northern Colorado. What we have here is a hydrocell pump. It's a single phase going in, three phase out. This little pump here, amazingly, is capable of pumping up to 300 gallons per minute. What we do, we're running this one on manual mode right now because unfortunately our digital screen, as you can tell from the manufacturer, is not quite operational. However, we do have a backup. Simple as turning it on, and you actually operate this thing by controlling the hertz going into the motor. As you can hear, it's going real slow already. And we can max this out. This is a sealless pump, so it's okay to run while it's dry. <coughs> so as we increased hertz, we increased our amperage. And you have it maxed out, it's only 7.5 amps. That's a couple coffee pots, if I'm not mistaken. One. Yeah. yeah. So if you max it out, go ahead and max that out. The most we're putting on here with the lights, Most of it's just the motor, so literally this trailer can, well, we've got about 3 amps, so total amps is about 10, 3 and 7 is 10, because my light's right here, probably pulling about, well, I got 8 foot of lighting and I'm only pulling a half amp with the sensor. So as you can see, it's very efficient for what they need to do, and that's really running most of it right here. And then, it, could you explain the screen? So the screen is proprietary to Hydrocell. What this is called, it's called a control freak. Normally when the screen is operational, you'll have a touch screen uh, option here where you can start, stop your pump control flow rate and actually you can do a totalizer where you can do a volume over time. So when this is operational, all we have to do is calibrate our system, which will actually calculate the hertz going through and how many milliliters you're pushing for those hertz over a given amount of time hit start and it pumps you know between one to three hundred gallons per hour and then so we did get this cut in from the last video you didn't see that that was kind of a pain we did a grinder unibit and then a sawzall and that's kind of how we got that to fit um, and then yeah we just gave them some power all the way through just one circuit here GFCI so it'll interrupt over here Make sure all the plugs are 20 amp rated. They actually came tamper proof rated on some of them, which is nice. We don't really need a WR wet rating in here because they're not going to hose anything down, but that's just kind of how they come. And then um, simply, yeah, just three circuits running this whole thing and a back fed breaker with the MBR2 clip. Um, probably a little bit more space than you needed in here, but it doesn't hurt that they can actually put in five more breakers. These two are, of course, going to be gone for good because this breaker is supposed to be stationary. Um, anyways, thanks for having us out. And, thank you. Yeah, it's an outstanding it's job. An awesome, done. Yeah, thank you. This has been a really neat experience for me. Um, I've wired other trailers in the past, but nothing like that. And that's a pretty fancy setup. And I think he said again, uh, was that with the pump too, or is that just the control box to make it uh, adding two legs? Oh, that's with the control box. Okay. Yeah. How, mu how much are these pumps? Just curious, as a nutshell for all of this. For the entire system, we're looking at about fifteen thousand dollars. Now that includes the control freak, like it says, proprietary to Hydrocell. The Allen Bradley drives, those are actually off-the-shelf systems. You'll find those a lot in your car wash operations. 
and then the I/O module is where th th this is where it communicates to the Salem Bradley drive. Not only does this split from single phase to three phase, it also is the brains of the pump. Oh, okay, because it's telling how much hertz to come in. Exactly. So how does it control that hertz? Because that's pretty interesting for us electricians. It's like 60 hertz flat or 50, and that's what we're looking for. That's a good question. I'd have to ask how you sell that question. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, it'll help you out for you guys out there in the field that do fracking. And basically, in a nutshell, you guys are pushing 300 gallons a minute of water for the frackers. Well, this is actually a chemical injection pump that you, we use to treat the source water coming in treating it as such to clean it? Or? To clean it, that's correct. What we do is we inject a biocide that reduces the bacteria that's going down those wells. So protecting the environment and protecting the life of that well. Wow, and then so does it go into a filter of a big container like this? It does. So all of our biocide actually comes into a bulk shipment that comes into a huge container. We use this to reduce head pressure onto the pump. So less pounds coming in and we do our job. Nice. And then that bio is that like uh, pri 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 proprietary, proprietary yes, as sir, well. It is. So is that like a chemical that that you guys um, have invented or? Oh no, this is coming from BWA. They're a water additive company. Uh, what they do is they develop environmentally safe chemicals for us to use on these fracking operations in order to. Like I said, one, make those wells safe, especially when we're near urban environments, that reduces our H2S output, which is a toxic gas, and it prolongs the life of that well by protecting the casing. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Well, cool. I'm glad to be a part of this. And um, yeah, and then the last thing is you guys are hooking up propane there for the guys when it's dead cold out. Uh, when OSHA allows, yes. Normally we use uh, actually closed uh, coil heaters due to the fact that on most paths we're not allowed to use open flame. Okay. So normally that's off. But normally if we're out like off site and we're just running a source pump and they need somewhere warm, we can use that. Right, okay. And then the last thing was is, um, are you reusing an 8KW generator to run all this or typically just as small as a 2500? You can use as small as a 2500 to run this. Wow, wow. But sometimes you might, you'll go more if you need electric space heat for exactly. 1,500 watts and maybe put a 3KW or whatever. 3KW. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully it'll help you out. This is a really cool video for you. I know I try to do one a week that is unique or some really bad find or whatever, but this is a pretty cool one, and I'm glad to get to, got to get in and do some pipe in here finally. Thanks for joining us. Have a